The Ballot 2023 right here on Plus TV Africa. You can also uh, make sure that you connect via every social media platform. We're on Twitter is at Plus TV Africa. Now, and it's all right to tweet at us. Let us know what's going on, where you are, and wherever it is you are on planet Earth, especially Nigeria. We'd like to find out what's going on in your polling unit. So all you need to do is just tweet at Plus TV Africa, hashtag Ballot 2023. We'll be here to take your comments in no time. You can also engage on Instagram as well as at Plus TV Africa. Uh, but, but just before we get back to our guests in the studio and introduce them, my name is Messi Bopo. Nyam Gol is also here for the ballot. Uh, we have updates and report reaching us now that Peter Obi, one of the presidential candidates uh, for this election, has arrived as polling unit. But we have to find out whether he's casted his vote. Fingers are crossed and would bring you all of the updates as soon as we get the information. But we're back here in the studio, we have two fine gentlemen who have joined us. Tunde Kolawale is here with us this morning, uh, the ballot 2023. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Thanks I mean, me. I mean it's good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we also have uh, Prince Francis Chilaka. Uh, Prince, it's good to have you join us. Thank you. Good morning. All right, then. But, but let's get to it. Let's get to the conversation. L let me start off with uh, Tunde Kolawale. Uh, Tunde, first of all, how do you feel? Most anticipated elections. Uh, now we have, uh, we're getting reports, those who are on, f on the field uh, trying to cast their vote. There's a lot that's going on. The mood right now is people have turned out in some quarters. Now we also have reports that some people are still playing football uh, on a day like this. Even though that's been an injunction to shut down the entire economy, no movement. Uh, freely as it should be, uh, but that's the report that we're getting. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, just like you said, personally I feel delighted that uh, this election is coming. It's uh, long anticipated. If you know what we as Nigerians have gone through the last uh, <laughs> a few years or thereabout, uh, you would uh, be anticipatory, you would be eager, you would want to see this transition run out uh, smoothly. And why? It is because democracy will forever remain the best form of government. Rather than begin to take cutlasses, guns, and uh, explosives uh, to begin to attack ourselves, it's better for us to go to the ballot box periodically, every four, four years or when there's a by-election, to elect new people to uh, manage our affairs. That is the only beauty about, uh, I mean, one of the most beautiful things about democracy. What I have seen, um, I would want to say it's a mixed bag of things. For example, when we were coming this morning, uh, we saw the young people playing football. They cut off some of the roads, blockaded them, and then they were playing their football and all that. And I was discussing with Prince that um, I would not expect to see this kind of a thing, especially most of the people we saw were the young people who probably have one allegiance to one political party or the other. I would have thought that this is uh, the morning they wake up was a good time to begin to go and knock on on people's doors and all that to say, look, uh, Madam uh, Oga, wake up, uh, take out your PCV, and then walk to the nearby police TV station, TV. and then uh, go on. But that was not what they were doing. Rather, they were playing football. Uh, for the adult, I noticed that those ones are enthusiastic. They 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 ready to go and um, go to the different ballot. I mean, polling booths to go and cast their votes and what have you. So. Um, we might be seeing a situation in which, uh, as it has always been, that uh, the voting demography of the country might not be too different from what we had experienced in the past. In fact, you find that some of these young people really didn't even register to vote in the elections that were about uh, to pass through. And that would be tragic. Tragic in the sense that uh, I keep uh, repeating this example. If you recollect the election that took place in uh, Uganda not too long ago, in which Bobby White, who is almost like our own show here and all that, was able to mobilize the young people behind themselves. And I think he got almost about 32% of the vote in there. But times without number, when young people contest in Nigeria here, you hardly see them make an impact. You remember the last election before this one, Duro Toya and so many of those young people show there and all of them uh, came up, uh, Quesley's here, and all of them and all that. But they hardly were able to scratch the ballot term. Um, uh, in the face, and you begin to ask yourself, why is Nigeria different from other climes? That, uh, or why are the young people not 
able to mobilize, make their impact felt, and even be able to determine the, the pendulum in which the direction of the election results is uh, likely to, 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 to swing. So these are some of the uh, worries that uh, we begin to see all over the place. Could it be that resources is a very important de determinant of uh, who gets what with regard to some of these elections? Could it be that some of these young people have really not um, mastered the tools of uh, mobilization, of getting the electorate to, 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 to line up uh, behind them? Could it also be that um, we tend to do more of some of these things on social media, forgetting that the majority of the people are at the grassroots who are not likely to be able to have access to the social uh, media. And incidentally, too, like some of the complaints we have gotten all over the place and all that, we've seen most of the candidates, especially the presidential candidates, they go to only to the state capitals and what have you, uh, to campaign uh, at the stadium, or any of the open venues all over the place and all that. The rural people, in a way, are not uh, 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 being uh, uh, carried along. Whereas, the first time I met Chief of Afimawolo, for example, was uh, in Ukele, uh, town in uh, Kogi State and all that. I was doing my secondary school in there. And he came with his chopper, landed in one of those public places and all that. And everybody went, and Dito Falaji Shev Shagari, they were all over the place. The remotest village that we could talk about, they were all over there. But maybe things have changed. A lot of media out in there now with which you can communicate with the people and all that. But there is still nothing wrong in the face-to-face -face or meeting the people like we see in America. You see presidential candidates go to shop floors, go to factories, go to uh, uh, um, uh, stadiums and some of these other places to reach the people. But yeah, uh, it's still not uh, I mean, the way it should be. Just uh, mm. as, you know, Yamgo, I'll hand over to Yamgo in no time. Let's look at data and statistics from yeah. INEC, you know, the reports as of January, uh, when February already, and today's the 25th, that 40% of uh, 93 point four million eligible voters are youths, the young people. So I'm just wondering, the people who are playing football now, young people, <laughs> where, 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 how do we put this? And political pundits prior to today have said that one of the game changers, one of the things that uh, we're anticipating is the involvement of youth in this election. It would be a huge you know, factor for um, the outcome of this election, the involvement. I mean, if you look at this number, the entire, th that's a pass mark. You know, if you were in school, it will probably be an E. And maybe you have Let some tests. Let my people go. <laughs> it probably an E, B, an E, and then you have your test, then you could probably be talking about a C or a B. So I'm saying, how do we now juxtapose um, these statistics from uh, INEC and with the current reality that we're faced with? People are playing football. Are they still part of the 40%? <laughs> Is that for me or for Prince? May Prince should come now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it's too early to start um, throwing stones at the youths. Uh, I'll say that. Um, yes, we, we saw quite a number of youths on the you know, streets playing football, but um, most of them too are small. They're not, I don't think they're of age. Um, you know, they're not of age, those who are meant to vote. Um, if 40% of registered voters that have their PVCs are youths, Obviously, they would not uh, keep this, uh, they would not hold on to it without exercising their uh, fundamental rights to vote. I believe that, yes, um, the youths of this country have woken up. I believe that um, we will hear the voice of the youths, and it's going to happen very soon. Um, you know, the thing is in Nigeria, we are, um, especially the elderly, they're always you know, too, early, too quick to castigate the younger ones. But you see, the thing is, we, 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 we need to understand that um, this election, like I've told a lot of people, is different from, the kind of, from every other election we've had in this country. In, in the sense that suddenly, the elites have become politically conscious. Suddenly, um, the youths have become politically conscious. Before now, you know, elections uh, in Nigeria have been owned by cattle riders, uh, mechanics, uh, market women, and all of that. But you, 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 well, there's a paradigm shift. And that shift is that people who ordinarily stay out of politics, people who ordinarily are docile, are coming to the realization to say, look, it is time for us 
to take back our country. And that is what is going to happen. People are going to come out to vote. Uh, because even while we're still coming on the road, we saw INEC officials still trying to set up in some places. They're just arriving with their materials and all of that. So I believe that in the next um, one or two hours, there's going to be a game change where people would realize, oh, it's time for us to vote. And, you know, I have my own people on the field, so I know already that a lot of young people are already galvanizing and going to their polling units. Now, for those who are still playing football, if you have voters card and you're playing football, then you're not wishing this country well. We'll say the way it is. You know, we expect that every Nigerian that has a voter's card that is of a votable age should go out there and exercise their right. It is the right to decide who leads them. And when we are able to all go out and vote for who we want, we can actually hold that person accountable and responsible. But in, 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 you know, in times past, we found out that people most times don't even get elected. They get selected into office. And that is why it is difficult to hold them responsible and accountable. So it's a challenge on the youth. It's a challenge on the voting masses to go out there, exercise your rights. Okay, let me take it back to Tunde because of what he said. Uh, let me use the, the, the phrase or the, the saying of St. Patrick's missionaries. They say, you either go to the mission by giving or you give to the mission by going. Now, the youths, they either make a change in our polity by taking up responsibilities as leaders or by voting in the right leaders. So it's a two-way thing. Now, are we, are the youths, I'm not that a, a youth, so I'm not calling myself, <laughs> <laughs> unless I'm in a political party, I cannot be a youth leader. So are the youths really ready for this change, this needed change, which is more or less in their hands? I take, for instance, when you were talking, you mentioned a showere. I know it was just an example, but... There was a Showere in 2019 contesting election. There was a Tokwe Fasua in 2019 contesting. There were other youths that were contesting. And we were expecting that, okay, if they will not garner the uh, votes that individually they can, they could rally around someone. And we thought that it was going to happen when they tried to have an agreement between them. About four of them came together and said, okay, let's do a mock election. Anybody who wins, we are supporting that person. And that election came, we gathered that one of them won, but they could not agree. Does that speak to the discipline within the youth at all? Does it show a youth that really needs or wants to change our country? Are the youth really ready to take up this responsibility and do what is right for our country? Yes, Tunde. Okay. But where, I am, where the, I want to make some categorization. When you look at the youth, you'll find out that they belong into two categories. There are those ones who are being highly educated and very, very sophisticated. And just like he said, there are those ones who are street urchins, who uh, they are living by touting, by toggery, by following some of the established politicians mm -hmm. from one place or the other to execute whatever agenda uh, may be given to them. For the educated elites, I mean, youths are not uh, the highly educated people are not. As we saw during the answers, they're beginning to feel the pains. And um, they really know now where the shoes are pinching them. And they are desirous of really making a change in this uh, society. I'll give you one example. Uh, there's one of those activists who is now living abroad. And uh, one of the international media was interviewing the lady and said, look, I will come back to Nigeria only if Peter Obi wins. If Peter Obi doesn't win, I don't see a dramatic uh, change in the direction of leadership. You should just count me out of uh, coming to Nigeria. For those people thinking like that lady and another, who are based in Nigeria presently and another, I am sure they will do everything within, within their means to make sure that um, the outcome of this next election becomes uh, something that is going to be favorable to the use of the country and the generality of our, of our people. But for the ones who are not educated, I haven't seen any paradigm change in their actions and in their activities and the kind of people that uh, they followed. If you have been watching the campaigns of all the different political parties and what have you find out, there is hardly any of the political parties, especially the established and the older ones uh, that we talk about and all that, who does not also have a sizable number of youths behind them campaigning for them, writing for them, 
and doing all manners of propaganda for them, even including highly educated uh, mm -hmm. uh, youths and what have you. The question to now ask yourself is that, uh, is there a unanimous, in a unanimity of purpose? Is there a unity, a kind of symmetry, as regards the direction in which the youth want to take the Nigeria to? For me, the answer is uh, no, uh, because the, the street urchins, those who are not educated, they tend to be more in number, they even tend to be more powerful in terms of uh, the leverage that they can uh, put on whatever elections uh, that is held at uh, this uh, time around. So if the preparation of those youths should dominate what happens at these elections and all that, whatever the educated one might, or the direction in which the educated one might be going and all that, it probably come uh, uh, to futility. So the, the truth of the matter is that uh, the way and manner our electoral system is skewed, the way and manner the uh, materials and resources are dispensed with, the way and manner in which um, the elections are conducted, and also the way and manner the security architecture of the country is configured and what have you, makes it very, very difficult for the average Nigerian youth, especially the most educated one, to be able to have their way and get their decisions uh, rammed through uh, the entire system, such as we have seen in some other countries of the world. Look at the time, I mean, look at Europe today. You find out 30 uh, year old men are now prime ministers, and now in places like Canada, in places like uh, Spain, the average uh, presidential age now is between 35 and then uh, 50. But look at most of the African countries and what happened, except those who have staged the coup, uh, uh, like I think uh, Ivory Coast and Burkina, I mean, Burkina Faso and the world have been. The youth are really not uh, making an impact. Even for a place like uh, Liberia, where George Weah won the free and fair elections and all that, we've been hearing a lot of rumblings uh, from that place as regards to the performance of uh, George Weah. Most times we are told that he lives outside the country and it is only when there are official assignments to be done that he comes back in there. So, and the whole world is watching. If the average Nigerian youth is going to behave like a George Weah and all that. He's still playing professional football. <laughs> <laughs> Psychologically. So we, 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 yeah. we, we, we I think the, the, the youth for me uh, don't appear to be ready. Okay, let, let, me, let me ask this as you're answering. Yeah. I, I know you want to say something about it, yeah. but don't you think the political awareness, we are leaving it to chance that uh, someone will have to grow into becoming aware of what the political climate is and all that. I remember that in the time of the UPNs and all that, yeah. even in primary school, you could recite what their cardinal points exactly. are that they're going to achieve in primary school. And even the people we are describing today as the street urchins, the people who uh, make things happen, the footmen, most of them, if not 90% of them, at least attend primary school. Maybe they don't finish even this primary school, but they get to a stage where they see the four walls of the school, yet they come out knowing next to nothing about politics or elections. Some of them don't know anything about that until they come of age and they think that the only way to be connected to the center politically is to do thuggery and other things, and they don't even know that they too can vie for positions. Are we not leaving this political awareness to chance too much so that our country is dying because of it? Um, I don't think we are. Uh, maybe in, in past we've done that, but I would say that um, you know, if you followed this particular um, election, um, in the last, um, maybe, let's say in the last eight months, I would, I am very proud mm. and uh, I give the kudos to our outgoing president um, in the sense that for once we've seen a campaign based on issues. We didn't see a campaign where you see candidates carrying corn on their head, candidates, you know, carrying, uh, pushing trucks wheelbarrows in mm. order to relate with the ordinary Nigerians. Yeah. We saw candidates who were telling us, for once, this is what we want to do. We see candidates telling us, hold me responsible. So we have moved from that point where, um, you know, politicians were taking advantage of the Nigerian youths and the Nigerian people. And that is where we are today. Now, when you talk about, you know, the 
um, call them whatever name you want to call them, talks and all of that. Um, I have been related, I relate to it, young people because I run a foundation. And I will tell you, most of these so called talks, most of them are not even registered voters. I cannot tell you for sure. I've, out of every 20 I've spoken with, maybe two or three. Uh, okay, um, back to you. Let, let me start with you now, Prince. Um, I know you had the final word before we caught you, short to go and join Wale. Um, earlier on, we were talking with some of our, our correspondents from all, all over the country, and they were telling us about how uh, materials arrived late. And even now, we just heard that 1045 or 945, that is so much behind time. They should have been there by 7, start the accreditation, 7.30 or something like that, or 8. Now, another issue that came from being late is the fact that the Electoral Act uh, provides that when the INEC um, officials get to the venue, the people are supposed to check and see whether the materials are complete, whether the BVAS is zero so that they don't inflate figures and so on and so forth. And then we were trying to interrogate the fact that maybe even the people at that polling unit do not even know that these are things that are provided for in the Act. Do you think the orientation, the awareness by INEC in preparation for this election was enough? Or what could they have done better? If you're talking about awareness, um, I, I, I've always said that um, INEC has not done enough. Uh, but I won't put the entire blame on INEC. Um, Nigeria is a country where you have uh, a Ministry of Information, and under the Ministry of Information, you have the National Orientation Agency. Um, this is a body that is saddled with dissemination of information, especially you know, during a process like we have, election process. Uh, I haven't seen the National Orientation Agency do anything. Ordinarily, they should be everywhere using the local language, using the English language, teaching people, educating Nigerians, creating awareness. Even as at this morning, the National Education Agency should be out there asking people to come out and exercise their rights. But you don't see this body doing any job. You don't see this body doing any job. And then INEC is also saddled more with, um, how do I put it, they, they, they waste so much time, because even the voters registration exercise, we saw how poorly it was conducted. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.